Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another installment of B-Movie Mania Interviews. My name is Paul Brooks, and I had such a blast chatting with my special guest, Graydon Clark. He is a director of 20 feature-length films, including the film we're reviewing on the next episode of B-Movie Mania, Joysticks. Mr. Clark also directed Final Justice, which is a Mystery Science Theater 3000 fan favorite, and Uninvited, which me and my co-hosts of the podcast absolutely love, especially me and Mike Hayes. He's also written a book. It's called On the Cheap, My Life in Low-Budget Filmmaking, and it's such a fun and interesting account of Graydon's entire career. I read the book and really found it to be insightful and fun and sometimes sad. Uh, it's quite the roller coaster. So if you're a fan of Graydon's films or if you're, you know, just a fan of B-movies in general, definitely head over to his website and pick up this book. I can't recommend it enough. www.graydonclark. Dot com is his website. That's G-R-E-Y-D-O-N, GradenClark.com. We'll, of course, post a link down below on our website so you can check out On the Cheap, My Life in Low-Budget Filmmaking. I knew I liked Graden's movies, but I had no idea how much I liked the guy, so I was really thrilled to have a chance to chat with him over Skype. And here now is my interview with director, writer, and actor, Mr. Graydon Clark. It's B-Movie Mania! Mania. Graydon Clark, thank you so much for chatting with me here on our podcast, B-Movie Mania. Well, thank you, Paul. It's my pleasure. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy doing this. Excellent. Um, I want to start by talking to you about Joysticks, because that is the movie that we're currently reviewing here on B-Movie Mania. Um, it's such a fun movie, and it seems like it must have been a whole lot of fun to make. So I was just hoping you could talk a little bit about the experience of making Joysticks. Sure. Uh, Joysticks was my tenth film, which coincidentally is right in the middle of the 20 that I have made so far. Uh, eventually, there were 18,000 video arcades across the United States. Every strip mall seemed to have one. This, this was at the very beginning of that huge, huge boom. And in L.A., there were probably a dozen or so scattered throughout L.A. County. So I started visiting them. And I realized that uh, there really could be a movie here. So uh, I worked with a couple of writers and we came up with the concept, which eventually became Joysticks. At the time, I was calling it Video Madness, kind of a takeoff on Reefer Madness. Uh, for the young, good-looking guy, I, I, I took Scott McGinnis, who was um, the lead uh, in Wacko, so he he I'd worked with him before, and then I cast uh, Leaf Green and Jim Greenleaf uh, in important parts, and and a couple of pretty girls, and uh, everything seemed to be ready to go. So we began filming. The filming went really well. I had used Joe Don Baker. Uh, Joe Don was and still is a, a very, very fine actor and a, and a very recognizable name. Uh, so I convinced him to participate with me on a percentage basis, but all went well. I was very, very pleased with the way it went. It was a lot of fun to make it. I, In fact, I had to, when we were filming in the video arcade, we had oh gee, I don't know, 20 or 30 arcade machines that I had rented and brought in and uh, used as a set dressing, but they were real machines. We had them hooked up and they could play and what have you. And I had to make an announcement every morning to the crew, hey guys, 
once we wrap and we're finished for the day, you can stay as long as you want and play as many games as you want. But let's not play them while we're actually trying to work because, you know, we're on a, a very tight schedule. I had 15 days, as I said, to make the picture. Right. But it was a lot of fun making the picture. Uh, the, the cast was wonderful to work with and uh, everybody seemed to like the script and got the jokes and so forth and uh, we cut the picture and then of course you have to have the music which that opening title song is terrific I, oh my gosh it's, you know, it's been stuck in my head for weeks is, isn't it amazing I mean I would like to take credit for it but I can't <laughs> because uh, my, my musical ability is uh, uh, minimal at best but uh, I had great music people, and they and they they came up with that song and played it for me, and I, I fell in love immediately with it. So my distributor came into town. I showed him the I don't know five minutes of film and so forth on a moviola, and he he said I can't tell anything about this. And I said I want to change the title to Joystick. He said we can't call it that. He said every parent in America will keep their kid from seeing the picture. And I said, boy, I hope so, because that would give us a lot of great publicity. And he said, well, I don't know. What if we called it Joysticks? And he put an S on the end of it. Well, frankly, I didn't see the difference between Joystick or Joysticks. I said, fine, fine. So, so we agreed to call it Joysticks. We finished the picture. And uh, the picture did huge business. Uh, in fact, we were the number one picture in the entire United States the weekend it opened. That's amazing. And it, 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 was, it, it astounded everybody. I know Entertainment Tonight in those days, Mary Hart was the uh, MC of it. She said, how did a little picture nobody ever heard of do this kind of business? And I knew the answer to that. And the answer was, it was about, it was set in a video arcade. And it was a teen comedy, and there was sex in it, and there was gross-out humor, and, and it was all the things that the market that I was going for liked. That's basically the story of Joysticks. Well, we absolutely loved watching it and reviewing it, so it's it's great to you know, hear some of the behind-the-scenes of, of the story of Joysticks. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. One of the other things... Um, that I thought was really interesting in reading the book. You know, you've had a long career and your movies are all very different in the sense that you dipped into a lot of different genres. Uh, comedy with joysticks, of course, horror movies, action movies, black exploitation. Is that something, uh, did you purposely set out to do that or is it something that just kind of happened organically? You know, I, I think it was a more of an organic situation. Uh, I grew up, as I said, in a small town in Michigan. We had one theater in the entire town. This was long before multiplexes, of course. And uh, a movie would come in and we'd play for the week, and then another movie would come in. And so I fell in love with cinema at a very early age. And I didn't care if it was a Western or a comedy or a thriller, whatever it was, horror film, uh, even musicals. Uh, I liked them. I liked everything. There you go. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Joe Don Baker. You made several movies with Joe Don Baker, and of course he was in Joysticks. And uh, it seems like you two became pretty close. What was your relationship like with Joe Don? I'm a big fan of his. Uh, I, fr I first met Joe Don uh, in 1981 when I was about to make Wacko. We had never talked, I, I knew who he was from his work. And I was a big admirer like you. So we met at the Beverly Hills Hotel. We sat down uh, across the table, it was midday, so we, we were just having drinks and and I don't drink, so, so I was having soft drinks and they were having real drinks. Joe Don said, you know, oh, the script is very, is very funny, it's very funny. But, you know, I am the pumpkin-headed killer. And when I am in my costume with the pumpkin head on, are you planning to use me? I said, oh, no, Joe Don, I can't do that. I said, I'll, I'll have a double in there for you because 
I've only got $150,000. And Joe Don said, then I don't want to do it. If I can't be the pumpkin headed killer. And I said to Joe Don, I said, well, look, I'd love to have you. I mean, it'd be better for me if, if you were the actor doing the actual role. He said, I'll tell you what, how long will you need me to play the full part? I said, well, five, maybe even six weeks. He said, I'll do it for the 150000 Wow. His agent gulped his drink, and I stood up, stuck my hand out to the agent, and I said, we have a deal. Guys, I'm sorry I've got to go now, but uh, uh, we'll be in contact with you, and, and if you want to talk about the script, let's get together. And I got the hell out of there as quickly as I could because I knew the agent would try to kill the deal. Yeah. Wonderful guy. So after, after uh, Wacko, Joe Don and I got along beautifully. And we became friends. Yeah, he was a Laker fan. I was a Laker fan. We'd, we'd go to the basketball game, so on. People think of Joe Don as a dumb Texan or something like that. Nothing could be further from the truth. He was born and raised in Texas, but he went to New York, the actor's studio, very serious about his work, very intelligent guy, charming guy. He's a great actor and a wonderful fellow. That's great. Um one of my favorite actors in your movies is Sherry Shattuck. Uh, her and I converse on Twitter from time to time, and she's always seemed like a really lovely person to me. She was, of course, in your movie Uninvited, which is my personal favorite. Uh, what are your memories of her? Well, Sherry uh, was terrific to work with. Uh, she came in on a casting call, mm -hmm. and when Sherry came into the office, she gave an excellent reading. Obviously, she was an extremely attractive woman. And uh, we cast her in Uninvited, and uh, she was great to work with. Uh, in fact, several years later, I made a picture in Russia. In fact, I made several pictures in Russia, but the second, no, the third picture in Russia, uh, I had a part that I thought would be perfect for Sherry. We hadn't talked in a couple of years, and uh, so I contacted her through her agent. She called me back. I said, Sherry, you want to go to Russia to make a picture with me? She said, I'd love to, but I'm going to have a baby. Ah. So I, I, I didn't have a chance to, to work with her again other than in Uninvited, but she was wonderful. Yes, she absolutely was. And me and my friends, the other guys who do the podcast with me, we watched that movie um, uh, all the time. I think that's how I initially found out about you as a filmmaker, so it's always got a, a soft spot in my heart for me. Well, as you recall, my biggest problem with that picture, a lot of it took place on a big yacht, big, uh, because a, a cat that has uh, uh, become malevolent chases our heroes throughout the boat. So to make that work, I needed a, a really big boat. So <laughs> uh, I thought, well, I'll go down to the marina in L.A. and see if I can find a boat. So I went down to the marina, and I'm looking there, and I see a guy there on, on one of the piers fishing or what the hell ever he was doing. And I explained that I needed a very large boat. He said, well, you won't find anything like that here. Uh, I said, well... <sighs> Any ideas? He said, yeah, go down to uh, uh, San Pedro, which is a, a, a port in Los Angeles. That's where they have the huge tanker ships that come in from Asia filled with cars and TVs and everything else. So I, I went down there and I, I talked to a security guard. He said, wait a minute, there is one that I know of. And uh, so I went over and looked at it, and my God, it was huge. It was beautiful. It was, this, uh, again, the size of a football field. And I, I looked up, and I thought I saw the ghost of Aristotle Onassis on the, on the bridge. I went to the guy, and I thought, ooh, this guy's going to charge me a fortune for this. So I talked to the guy, and he, he said, uh, okay, well, 10000 a day, so that's a hundred grand." I said, whoa, 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 wait a second. As I'm a low-budget filmmaker, I said, uh, the most I could give you is total 10000 1000 a day. He said, 1000 a day? He said, are you crazy? To take this out to sea, I have to have a captain and two or three P-51 
people working with him, and the captain is 500 a day, and his people are 250 a day. It's 1,000 a day for my crew. I said, well, what if we filmed on the dock? He said, well, if you filmed on the dock, I suppose I could do it for 1,000 a day. So I said, okay, we'll film on the dock for uh, 80% of the time, and the days that we go out, I will pay for the captain and the two crew members. So we made a deal, and uh, then I thought, oh, shit, I have another problem. (laughs) In the story, the boat sinks, and uh, the bad guy's cabin floods with ocean water. And uh, so I looked into the various studios around town that had a tank. Most of the big studios did, but they wanted thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just to film one day there. What the hell do I do? I'm sitting, uh, I had a nice home at the time with a pool, and I'm sitting by my poolside, and I look at the pool, and I think, wait a minute. I wonder if I could build a set in my pool it's supposed to be nighttime when the ship sinks, so I film it at night. I don't light anything other than what I want to be lit in the pool. Maybe I could use my garage as a set for the guy for the bad guy's uh, cabin. Film half a day in my garage, then move that set from my garage to my swimming pool at night, heat the pool, make it steam, and so forth and so forth. Uh, and and I could make this work. So that's the way I filmed Uninvited. Well, I thought it was, when I read that in the book, I, I thought it was such a inventive solution, and it's such a fun movie to watch, so everything worked out okay. I appreciate that very much. What do they say... Uh, Necessity is the mother of invention, I guess. Exactly. Last question, Graydon. I was hoping we could spend a moment talking about your wife, Jackie, who was also an actor and appeared in several of your films. Um, Can you just talk briefly about her and what it meant to you to have had such a, um, a loving and supportive partner while you were out trying to make all of these crazy movies? (laughs) Crazy movies is right. Uh, I met Jackie in an acting class, and I like to say that the day I met her was the luckiest day of my life. Uh, And I was interested immediately. She was a beautiful young actress. She was uh, born and raised in Burbank, so she knew something about the film business, and she knew better than to get involved with a struggling actor, which is certainly what I was. So she was not interested at all. But I was, and and uh, and I had written a script for a, a fellow named Al Adamson, and I wrote a script called Satan's Sadists, and in it, the the young woman who was the the leading lady being chased by a group of motorcycle bad guys, uh, I thought, you know what, uh, Jackie. Uh, would be perfect for that role. So I did some maneuvering to get her that part, and we were down in uh, Indio, California, which is a kind of a suburb of Palm Springs, making the picture, and that's where we really got to know each other. We got together, and I was able to raise a little money to, as I said, $10,000 for my first picture, and uh, she was in it, and... uh, we stayed together throughout all these pictures until uh, uh, 2003 when suddenly she passed away. And uh, that, of course, was a difficult time for all of us. I, we had two sons at the time, but uh, somehow we've all survived and moved on. But she was completely supportive of my movie making. I mean, to raise the money on my pictures, I would place a second mortgage second trustee on my house and naturally since we were married at the time she was a co-owner of the houses so she would have to sign that second mortgage that allowed me to get the money to make my pictures i remember thinking 
my gosh, I'm asking her, a new mother with the three-month-old baby, to sign a second mortgage on, a, on our house for me to get the money to make joysticks. But she was amazing. She always said, basically, whatever I wanted to do, she would support me. Now, I would come to her and many times, and I would, I would have an idea for a picture. And I would say, what do you think of this? Whatever it was. And she would say, that's awful. That's terrible. Are you kidding? That's not going to make a movie. So then I would go on to something else. I remember when I first wrote Uninvited. It was not a cat. It was a rat. And the rat had just somehow gotten abo on board the ship. So I'm, I'm talking my thoughts along with her. And she says, a rat? Who wants to see a movie about a rat? I said, well, Willard did good. She said, ah, that's an exception. Don't make it a rat. Make it something else. So that's when I came up with the idea with a cat and that it vomits its own kind of rat figure. <laughs> that's great. Side of it. But uh, so, so she was uh, intimately involved in the production, post-production, screenwriting. I would always... When I was editing a scene, I would have her come into the editing room. So I was very, very lucky to uh, have her in my life for, I don't know, 34 years or whatever it was. And uh, I was a lucky fellow. Very well said. Well, Graydon, uh, I cannot tell you, I mean, after having been a fan of your movies for so many years, it's uh, such a pleasure to get a chance to chat with you a little bit and hear some of the you know, behind the scenes stories of uh, all your all your movies and, and your incredible career. So I thank you very much. Thank you, Paul, anytime. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Hope you enjoyed the interview. Make sure you head over to Graydon's website and pick up his book, On the Cheap My Life in Low Budget Filmmaking. www.graydonclark.com is the website. GradenClark.com. My thanks to Mr. Clark for chatting with me, and thank you for listening to B Movie Mania interviews.